Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I'm your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. I'll get used to that someday. Uh, for those of you who know where I got married and I'm working on a name change, and so it's, yeah, got to get used to it. <laughs> anyway, um, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. We are a webinar, webcast, online show, whatever you want to call us. We're here live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. However, if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show every week and post it up to our website afterwards. So, And I'll show you exactly where that is um, at the end of today's show, so you can go see where you'll go to see that. Um, we have all of our recordings from all of our previous shows going back to the very beginning. Um, and Compass Live started in January 2009. So we've been around for quite a while. <laughs> um, so you'll be able to watch recordings there. Um, we do um, both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So if you do have any friends, colleagues, um, neighbors, family, whoever might be interested <coughs> in any of the topics you see, uh, share our links, share our websites, share the recordings to them, um, and they can come and watch them. Uh, we do a mixture of things here on the show, uh, presentations, interviews, book review sessions, demos, uh, sometimes a little mini training sessions, depending on the topic. Uh, basically, our only criteria is that it's um, library related, has something to do with libraries. Either um, libraries are doing something new, uh, something interesting that you might be want to hear about, reports, studies, whatever, and some out of the box things too, things you might not know why they're on the show. But trust us, we'll always come around to having something to do with libraries and all types of libraries, public, academic, school. Um, museums we've had on. Um, we're pretty broad and open that way. Um, we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that will sometimes do sessions um, with, for things that are specific to what we're doing here through the Library Commission, but we also bring in guest speakers, which is what we have today. To my left with me today is Jake Rundle, who's hi Jake, Hello. from um, Hastings Public Library here in Nebraska, just um, west of Lincoln, and he drove in this morning. Um, some people were very surprised, actually, I said you were coming in, and they said, the day before Thanksgiving and holiday traffic. I was like, I don't know. It's, the <laughs> it's not bad yet. It's not bad. Yeah, people aren't really. Going no one's crazy. driving from west to east. It's all flying in to Omaha and Lincoln and then oh, going to leave. To yeah. parts away. So. Yeah, not bad. It was right? easy. Yeah. <laughs> um, and Jake's been on the show before with other things, but he's got this, um, I think, fun that I see him post about a lot on Facebook. Um, Bring librarians into the bar <laughs> in some way. So I'm just going to hand it over and have him uh, go through his presentation and tell you what they've been doing out in Hastings to reach out to their locals. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, like Krista said, my name is Jake. I am the technology librarian at the Hastings Public Library. And uh, we do a thing called pub quiz. Uh, so it's bar trivia. It's, it's pretty low key. I mean, in terms of staff time sometimes. Um, but it is an event that we do that um, has a really good turnout. So I'm going to tell you kind of our history and what we do. Uh, I just came off of one last night. We uh, had a very special pre, usually we do it the last Thursday of every month uh, because then we're not the fourth Thursday or you know the, a date. It's always the last Thursday of the month at a bar. And we usually alternate between two. So since Thursday is Thanksgiving and we didn't want to do Wednesday of right. next week, so we just, just said we'll do it Tuesday. Um, but we had 102 people play. So wow. in terms of library programming numbers, uh, it's one of our best. I mean, the only thing that beats us is every story time <laughs> all month long. Yes. Which doesn't you count because really I do them like six times a day. <laughs> you can't beat story time. No, you really can't. <laughs> um, click. Ooh, there we go. So yeah. started at HPL in 2010. It was my grad school practicum uh, assignment. I mean, I got to pick my own assignment, but I was at the Hastings Public Library. I didn't have any experience with adult programming. All of my previous jobs had been in circulation or in youth services, and so I wanted to do something um, in adult programming um, so I could kind of get that in my wheelhouse. And over the summer, I'd been living in Omaha uh, working for the Nebraska Shakespeare Company, uh, and so we were, we and the other event staff who lived uh, on campus and just stayed up really late and slept in really late, um, would go to various establishments where drink was provided. And at one called The Slowdown, one day there was trivia being played when I went in. And it was really, really hard. Oh, right? really? But like, because they, they did their trivia in five, in five 
question increments. So each topic had five questions and they'd mm -hmm. move on. So there was audio visual. So I walked in on the identify mm -hmm. this Star Wars character from their picture. So it was like oh. a really, it was an unmade oh. up wicket and a really, really young Alec Guinness. Oh, and wow. the guy who plays Tarkin, but you have to know his name. And you're like, so the actor and not yeah, the character. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it was, so they're getting pretty serious. They're it was getting, really yeah. seriously hard. <laughs> uh, I, I walked in halfway through and I thought I just, Oh, let just try to answer some out. No, it was terrible. Um, but I thought that could be something cool that I don't think Hastings does. I'm moving mm -hmm. to my hometown as a 25-year-old, um, so I'm trying to find fun things for people my age to do mm -hmm. so I can find the people my age so I don't go crazy. <laughs> uh, so I, I suggested that the library try this thing for four months while I'm doing my practicum. Uh, and the director said, sure, go with it. Uh, write up some stuff, uh, get some help, and go. So... Um, I called the local establishment and said, hey, I want to do trivia once a month. Is that all right if we invade one? Because it's a, a bar that has three levels, um, not like stories, but it's just there's a the bar, and then there's the seating area, and then there's pool and mm -hmm. shuffleboard. So I was like, can we take pool and shuffleboard because that's the smallest seating area? So he's like, yeah, sure, whatever. Um, my grad school loans paid for the prizes the first four months. Um, since then, they've been donated, which has been really nice. nice. Um, but yeah, so we started playing once a month. Um, the first month was people from my church, my parents, my brother and his wife, um, <laughs> a couple friends of the library. It was, you know, it was, it was a good yeah. 26 people who came. That's not um, bad. Yeah, yeah and it, it, has, it grew after that when I got hired at the library to twice a month. Um, we played at two bars. The, first, the second Wednesday and the last Thursday, that got really confusing. Mm -hmm. uh, so then we cut the Wednesday and we just travel now. Um, and then I guess I got off topic on my, my little backstory. So there are two of us that work pub quiz, I who present, and then Erica who used to play, and then she started working at the library, and then she offered to help. And now she's our teen library assistant, so she does full-time teen work, but this is still her, her one thing she does for me is um, she helps me write the quiz. Mm -hmm. By helps me, I mean she does it all and says, here, check this to make sure the questions make sense and you can ask them mm -hmm. you know, and sound like a normal person uh, on a microphone. Uh, but she is content to do all the behind the scenes work and let me stand in front of the people and talk, which is just fine. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. So from our first program to our uh, last, wow. we had a 1,000% increase in people who attended. And that's, I mean, give or take, but I looked at our, our uh, I did this presentation for the Mountain Plains Library Association in Colorado last month. Um, so I looked at our programming numbers because, of course, we sit on those for a thousand years. Mm -hmm. um, and our adult programming numbers um, f from July 2010 to December 2010 increased a thousand percent because we did pub quiz. The December pub quiz, we placed it between Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve mm -hmm. uh, on a weird day, but it was in mean, no, everyone's home. Uh, we had 120 people playing. Every table in that bar had an answer sheet and was playing pub quiz. So... <laughs> So now the bars are loving this. Now, obviously. yes, yes, absolutely, and and that was why we started our second bar is because the owner called and said, "Hey, I was at the I was at pub quiz the other night, and I want you to do it at my bar because you bring people, um, and that's mm -hmm. that's something you can say when you're looking for a partner in this in your community is that we can guarantee you know I mean even 20 people who come, each of them will buy maybe two drinks, drinks in the hour, and food uh, maybe yeah. if they have food. Thursday yeah. is wings wing night at Murphy's. Mm -hmm. uh, Tuesday is burger night, so I didn't eat burgers last night. I should have. <laughs> but usually it's wing night, so I just, you know, fill myself with 16 or so wings. Um, and then once the pub quiz is done, then I buy myself a, a very short gin and tonic <laughs> to enjoy my success. You don't want to drink before you're trying to host. No, no, don't drink before you try to host because <laughs> you're on the joke. clock, and that's not good. <laughs> uh, but no, so the programming numbers jumped. Hugely, bigly, as they say in presidential <laughs> politics, um, and it's 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 the kind of thing that s kept being that awesome. Uh, a bad pub quiz for us is sixty people, uh, which is a really great library program yeah. for adult programming. I mean, sometimes you do stuff where you bring in an author and you'll have ten, and you're like, that's a good, that's good. Uh, so a bad day for us is sixty. Uh, so. You can't go wrong with those numbers from a library's perspective, uh, unless you're some sort of gigantic system that has <laughs> well, all yeah. numbers. I mean, 60 for a community of Hastings is, is good, very spectacular. Good. So, 
Uh, I <laughs> have pictures of me doing pub quiz. Um, they're floating in the cloud somewhere. Um, for my presentation in Colorado, I actually, the, the, the Daily Tribune came in 2012 to do a story on us, so there are pictures there, but I can't find the, uh, can't find the article online anymore, so I was going to just steal that picture and attribute it, but mm. couldn't even find that. So just imagine me standing with a microphone looking like I know what I'm doing. Uh, there will be some pictures and some video that I will get tracked down, and I'll get them to Krista so she can put those links mm -hmm. onto the oh, yeah. Encompass Live thing with all the other good stuff. Um, so the good news about pub quiz is once you find your partner or partners, the rest is pretty easy. I mean, finding the, the institution or the bar or the establishment that wants to host you, um, that's probably the hardest part um, because – because it's not just on the part of the bar being interested, you also have to take into consideration that perhaps you need to run this by your library director and your library board and the city council because libraries and bars don't usually, you know, hold hands and dance together. Um, and sometimes people see that as a conflict of interest that your, you know, your city funded, you know, pillar of institu institutional learning is, you know, hanging out with a bunch of drunks on Thursdays. Um, but... I argued and continue to tell other people to argue that this is about outreach to a community that doesn't see a need to go to the library. Um, our main goal is to land millennials, uh, my fickle generation that uh, doesn't have kids yet, um, has a spouse or a boyfriend or a girlfriend and just decides that they don't need the library because why would I? I've got dual income, no kids, I can afford all my entertainment needs, I can afford to read anything I want. I don't have the attention span to read anything longer than a BuzzFeed article anyway. Why the library? Um, and so pub quizzes are a way to get to places where they already are going um, and then to talk about our services and products to them um, because it's easy. Um, we've done bonus prizes, for bonus points for uh, if you have a, a digital library app on your phone. So we, we subscribe to Hoopla and One Click Digital and Zinio. And so uh, we'll just say, if you have the Zinio app on your phone right now, raise your hand and you get a point. So Yay. it has to be that instantaneous uh, free points gimme. And then we explain that Zinio is uh, the app where you can read 150 magazine titles for free forever on your phone, tablet, or other device. And all of a sudden people start downloading it. Exactly. <laughs> and, then, and then you get to increase your numbers because someone's like, oh, I didn't know the library had Field and Stream as a digital copy. I've been reading that for a thousand years, and now I don't have to. We say, exactly, mm -hmm. you don't have to. Um, the one thing uh, that always surprises me uh, is that good trivia is hard mm -hmm. uh, because it's one thing to just grab the Trivial Pursuit questions uh, and crib them, which we did for a while because that was easy and they were hard questions. Mm -hmm. um, but Good trivia, you have to find a balance between this is a really easy question on the theme uh, and then those really, really hard questions that maybe one person or one team will know because that's how you're going to avoid tiebreakers, mm -hmm. which are the worst uh, because no one ever plans for them because we just assume that <laughs> somebody's no going to come out ahead. Someone's going to come yeah. out ahead, exactly. Um, so last night, for instance, our pub quiz was Seasons Eatings, so everyone loves puns, uh, yeah. and it was all questions about holiday foods. So we do uh, the first half of the pub quiz, first 15 or 20 questions is always uh, I ask a question and then the teams write on their answer sheets. Uh, and then the second part, either 15 to 20 questions, is usually identify. We usually make picture packets. Um, sometimes we do it... Um, at one of the bars we go to, they've got a huge karaoke setup with a lot of TVs all connected through HDMI daisy chains. Mm -hmm. So we just um, plug in what usually goes to the karaoke uh, TV into our laptop, and then we put movies and music clips and everything like that. So it's identify from the, the TV clip. Um, in January, we're doing the history of the Internet, so that's really yeah. going to be um, – Super, super duper fun because mm -hmm. uh, we get to play with all the YouTube stuff. Um, but yeah, the 
the fine line you walk between making a quiz too easy and making a quiz too hard um, is tricky. And you can't make them too hard because if every team only gets 10 questions out of 30, then nobody wants to come back and play. Have fun, the, like, yeah. that's, but if everyone, if everyone gets 28 questions out of 30, then you've got a bunch of tiebreakers. I was like, this was too easy. That's <laughs> dumb. Um, so you gotta, you gotta, you gotta walk that fine line. Um, again, our aim is to make the pub quiz questions informative, fun, and challenging. Uh, it's really great when you get those questions that people think they know, and then when you're going through the answers, um, you say it, and half of your tables are like. Yes, and the other half are just so disappointed because they just knew <laughs> they thought it. that yeah. that was the right answer. Um, last night's question was, besides cinnamon, what's another ingredient in pumpkin pie spice? And so it could either be clove or nutmeg or allspice mm -hmm. or there's a fourth one. I don't even remember what it is. Um, but I make one that has ginger. Ginger, that was the other one. There we go. So <laughs> some people knew that and some people were really excited. Um, and some people were kicking themselves because they, they, they just put in an answer. Um, our trivia strategy is always to base it on a theme. Um, we try to be diversified. We try not to repeat too often. Um, we kind of we got in, for a while we got into the the habit of being like, oh, it's October, we'll do Halloween or Halloween something. Oh, it's November, we'll do Thanksgiving, Christmas something. Um, the only one that really tried and true we stick to every year is every December we do the year in review because we're the last Thursday of the month. That's mm -hmm. awfully close to New Year's Eve. So we always try to do either questions from previous quizzes or questions from the year, pop culture, politics, sports, mm -hmm. art, the whole shebang. That's nice having the questions from the previous ones because people can, you know, we could say, you know, if you remember something when you were here back in July, you might automatically, if you can remember that question, what the answer was that you didn't get now. Exactly. Um, the other great thing about themes is you can cherry pick the people you want to show up. So if you're mm -hmm. in a town with a college and you do a Disney theme um, mm -hmm. trivia night, you're going to have every college kid who's like, I know everything <laughs> about Disney because that is my jam. Uh, superheroes are really big. Um, we did this summer, I'm not sure. Every summer we do uh, what we call our Summer of Love, well, we called it Summer of Love Pub Quiz once. It's mm -hmm. uh, where we leave our two regular bars and go to other establishments. Oh. Um, and all I four of Take it on the road. Yeah, more. yeah, uh, Pub Quiz on the road. May, June, July, and August are all four on the same or similar theme. So this year it was Trivial Pursuit. Mm -hmm. So each of the four months was... Uh, questions from different categories. So like uh, the yellow one, yellow and pink were together. <laughs> See, I know the colors and not yeah. what they call them. Um, well, they change them from game to game too. But yeah, but, <laughs> but uh, if you came to all four, you could collect the pie pieces on the bottom of the pub quiz answer sheet, and that got you in to win um, the newest edition of Trivial Pursuit oh. in August. Uh, we only had two teams that made it to all four, so uh, one lucky team won. Um, in previous years, we've done music, so we've done, uh, like, our first quiz was Beatles music, and our next was country and rock, mm -hmm. and we had music videos as one because we were at the mm -hmm. bar with the AV set up. Um, so themes are great. Themes over a long period of time can be fun. Um, next year, we'll probably do something for the quasi-sesquicentennial, mm -hmm. uh, do a whole bunch of Nebraska trivia. We've done Hastings trivia. Uh, we've you. done... Trivia about specific institutions. Uh, we pair with Hastings College every now and again to do like a Hastings College trivia night for incoming freshmen and their parents. Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we do. I do a pub quiz with um, a peer HIV education organization on Hastings College campus, so they're tailored towards their the stuff that they're going to be learning. Um, but it's kind of fun, and it's usually over coffee, and they feed me. So, <laughs> um, pick a theme uh, because if you're just doing random trivia. That's great, but people get bored with that, or they think, mm -hmm. "Oh, I'll just come next time." And if mm -hmm. they if they write you off the one time, then they might never come back. And uh, you get the themes, you get people will come <coughs> two specific ones, but that's that it attracts them even more because it's their like you said, it's their jam. Exactly. So they're they know I know this one and I'll win. And yeah, and <laughs> the nice thing about themes is that if you uh, the way you play is teams of up to four. So someone, I say, oh, the theme this month is Disney. And someone will say, oh, I suck at Disney. I say, yes, but you can find three people on your team who don't. Yes. So 
Uh, yeah, there's no registration. I should put that out there. We just play. We show up at the bar about 15 minutes before. Um, make sure the mic is turned on at the bar that has a microphone. Um, usually it's just me yelling, um, <laughs> which works fine. I'm loud. It works out. Um, and then uh, we pass out uh, library branded pens that we encourage yeah. people to take with them or leave for the bar. Uh, yeah. And then we have uh, answer sheets made in Adobe Illustrator, 15 on the front, 15 on the back. When we started, I handed you your library approved stubby pencil <laughs> and a blank yeah. piece of paper and I told you to fill it out one through 20, uh, one through 30. So, so we've come a long way, but you can, you can go as high tech or as low tech as you want. Um, but the other winning trivia strategy we have is switch up the venue. Uh, everyone likes the burger joint, um, but sometimes we go to the wine bar. Uh, sometimes we go to the hole in the wall karaoke bar. Uh, sometimes we go to the sports bar north of town. Uh, we go to the kino every other month or so. Um, so we try to just go places we haven't been before to see if we can't catch a different group of people. Uh, because some people uh, are really excited to come to pub quiz because you're going to their bar. Oh, yeah. So because the library is going to the rail. Not a bar that's in Hastings, but I couldn't think of one. <laughs> I couldn't think of the one I'm thinking of. But I know that there's a brass rail here, right? Yeah, there's a rail in Lincoln. Mm. Sorry, coffee's important. Um, but because you're going to their bar, they'll come to you and they'll play, not because they're really interested in trivia or even the library necessarily, but because you're there. And then that's your opportunity to grab someone that um, either doesn't use the library or hasn't used the library, um, we're lucky. Uh, we are a hosted Circe Dynex library, so we have we and we pay for mobile circ. So I can sign someone up for a library card on my phone. That's awesome. So I take library I take you know dead library cards, and I can um, sign, I can go through all the the sign up questions in about two minutes, and I can hand them a library card and say, here you go, you're now a card carrying member of the library, um, which is great because um, it's one it, it's it's helpful. Um, it's good for library card numbers, you you know. Um, but even taking um, taking books, um, putting a book display. If you're going to do questions on a theme, and you're going to take all your questions out of books in your cookbook section, let's say, or your World War II questions, grab a bunch of World War II books and set them up on the bar and say, "Here's a book display. Um, have applications for library cards ready to go." Um, it's and a great can way. Check them out right there. Exactly. Take it's, the book a, home. it's a great way for you to market not just what you're doing for the trivia, but what you do in your day to day. Um, all of our pub quiz um, answer sheets usually have on the back, on the bottom, um, our next pub quiz dates and any other important dates coming up for the library. Um, currently, we're in a temporary space, so there are no important dates really right. because we, don't, we don't do anything. <laughs> the new place is done, built still. Yes. Or. Yes. <laughs> Very much being in the middle of. Built. There's no windows on half of the building. Oh, yeah, you don't want to be in there. Then. So it, it's a little unsettling. <laughs> yeah, one of our um, library staff here had was, was actually watching now the show. Um, last night you were talking about placing uh, Barrymore. She went there last night because they had their their quiz night. Mm, she mm -hmm. saw about this session. It's like I'm gonna check it out and see what they do. So there's yeah, there's a lot. You would be surprised with places in your town that you could that are already doing it. You might be able to connect with them mm -hmm, too mm -hmm. if they already got something going. Yeah. Uh, our other trivia strategy is don't do simple question and answer. Um, that's fine to start because some people are really good at question and answer, but we try to do identify from a picture. So we've done in the past identify a movie, but we've taken the time to Photoshop out any of the any of the movie title. So you know you just kind of fuzz mm -hmm. it out. Mm -hmm. So you're like, which Jack Reacher movie is this? And you just put Tom Cruise looking all like. <laughs> We've done last night's was identify presidents pardoning turkeys. Oh, so right. there was that's, that's been, yep. yeah. So that was that was the first half, and the second one was identify cookies. Uh, so there were rosettes and black and whites and uh, ginger snaps. Uh, so it runs the gamut. We've done identify the Disney prince based by the princess that's shown. Uh, so oh, so it's it, it can be any number of things. It can be. Excuse me. It can be kind of nothing at all. It can just be. Uh, I mean, I, we haven't done this yet, but it'd be fun to be like you give them the uh, like a picture from highlights and just say how many how many turtles are in this picture, mm -hmm. and then try to find all the hidden turtles, and then you have to write down the number. 
See if you got it right or not. Yeah, see yeah. if you got it right or not. So you could, if you, you know, circle all you want, but you have to be sure that the number is correct. Um, so do something that gets people involved, not just in thinking and talking in a small group, but also looking at something or watching a video um, or listening to a clip of music. Um, we did. Uh, well, I wonder about that. The song snippet ones is that like. Yeah. I can identify this song in so many. <laughs> so uh, for the Beatles quiz we did last summer, uh, we took. Uh, orchestral arrangements of the Beatles music ah, and no played lyrics. 20, 20 second snippets of that and said, what is this song? Here's the orchestral arrangement. Because that was the only way we could freely access it because it was on Freegal, I think. Ah, right. <laughs> it was on one of the library products we could only get orchestral arrangements of the Beatles. We're like, perfect, that's close uh, enough. Yeah. Sometimes the lyrics will give it away totally. Exactly, so exactly. Like <laughs> um, so uh, we've done identify the I keep going back to the Disney ones, but that's the ones that I've most recently done. Mm -hmm. uh, so we did identify the Disney movie based on its its love song. Um, it, and there's so many more. When we did our music trivia, there were lots of, mm -hmm. our, our summer of music, there were lots of identify um, based on audio clips. Um, and then for that, it's just mostly being prepared to either have a speaker system to play it or walk around to your individual teams. Uh, we have, um, we put the, the sound snippets on Google Drive uh, so I can play it on my phone. Um, I have a Bluetooth speaker that I personally own that I take with us when we do those. Um, and then I just stick it on the, stick it on the table so they can listen to it and then move from move table to table. That's cool. Like trade, yeah. If you don't have a sound system, yeah. Exactly. And that's the thing. If you don't have that a sound system, your, to, yeah. your voice will will fry if you try to sing the lyrics yourself. <laughs> uh, don't make the questions too hard. Everyone hates hard questions, especially when they don't know them. Even if it's like you're teaching them because they don't know and now they'll know forever kind of thing. Um, you know, maybe only have three or four of those questions total in a quiz um, because people hate to feel dumb. That's really, you know, all that we can say, because mm -hmm. people take trivia very seriously, and there's Some people do, yeah. And it's not even people like, oh yeah, oh yeah, I like sports. I, you know, get into competitions, and you're like, oh guys, we're gonna play trivia against these other people in the bar, and they're like, oh, let's go. <laughs> like, I know. seriously, cutthroat. Um, elementary school teachers, I, I, in my observation, are usually the worst, because like, <laughs> oh, we're a bunch of kindergarten ladies, and then they get real hardcore about it. <laughs> um, if you make the questions too hard in the beginning, people check out early, um, leave. Uh, not that you haven't already counted them, which is fine, but then they might not come back for your next one. Mm -hmm. So you got to make sure that the hard ones are interspersed. Because and, you mix it up then, yeah. Not, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, don't make it too easy, like we've said. Um, if it's all too easy, people don't like to feel super smart. I mean, because they know that everyone else, it, they feel if it's this easy, it must be this easy for everyone else. It's like when I take the ACT math questions, I'm like, oh man, this is so easy. <laughs> I'm the king of the world. <laughs> You're not. Yes. Uh, well, but, the thing about trivia, it's not supposed to be easy. That's why it's trivial. It's like exactly. Some of the simple things you're like, well, everybody knows this one, but then it's the ones that, wait, only one person on my team even even watched that Disney movie mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. watched that, that other TV show or something. Exactly. I'm going to pull up that other quiz because I don't think I have many questions left. Um, strategy, always have a tiebreaker. For instance, last night our tiebreaker was um, we had a tie for second place. So our first place team wins a $25 gift card to the, the, to the establishment. Second place team wins $15. Uh, we had a tie for first. And so the tiebreaker question was, according to the USDA, what must the internal temperature of your turkey be in order to be safe for human mm -hmm. consumption? And the answer is 165 degrees. Yes. One team said 165. One team hemmed and hobbed between 165 and 160 and settled um, on 160. Oh. And I was like, no. oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you were right six times. <laughs> you were wrong seven times because you kept going back and forth. Uh, uh, but that's good because that was a tiebreaker and then we didn't have to worry about it. Uh, seasons eatings. Because it's. I'm worried people are going to ask questions about last night's pub quiz, and I'm not going to know. Like, what were the questions yeah. that you did? Yeah. Uh, oh, well, I'll find that in a second. So I guess okay. now we come to the questions portion. Um, 
Sure. I can ask. I can. I mean, if it's mm -hmm. questions about how how PubQuiz works or mm -hmm. how you can get buy-in from your community, um, I'm kind of the expert on sweet talking people to <laughs> just believe that it's a good thing. Oh yeah. So and that I think is the key, and having someone at your library, either you or someone else who's good at that. There's always somebody who's, or multiple people, mm -hmm. who's good at schmoozing with the local community and making and letting them know here's what we want to do, and then. Yeah. Why it would be good a benefit to you? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So this sounds like that it's also something. Once you get started, you, you put up some money that it doesn't cost very much to do this. Correct. Unlike many events that the library does, you have to provide um, food or uh, supplies or drinks and everything. Mm -hmm. And because uh, usually when you're having a, some sort of event, especially with kids and with adults too, you provide some sort of refreshments. The bar provides all of that. Mm -hmm. And once you get, like you said, the community involved, it, the, the the prizes aren't even supplied. But you mm -hmm. get, what the sheets that you have to print yeah. out for some the staff time to questions. make the questions and some yeah. staff time to make the answer sheet. Um, but I mean, that's your staff time would be eaten up in, in any other program you're doing for oh, sure. you know a kid's craft or something like that. Mm -hmm. Plus the you got to do the planning. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So. Uh, so it's a very cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Very low investment in yeah. terms of monetary, and mm -hmm. it can even be pretty easy in time um, if you've got someone who's interested in doing the quiz. Um, and we've even partnered uh, one month. I was going to be out of town. Erica was still new to the pub quizzing stuff, and she wasn't comfortable doing it herself. So I went to a radio DJ who um, interviews me once a month to um, talk about pub quiz, and I said, hey, Ty, next month, do you want to write the questions and give the quiz because I'll be out of town? And I'll send a staff member to wrangle all the, the answer sheets and the pens and the points and stuff. And all you have mm -hmm. to do is make the quiz and do it. You said, be absolutely. Host, yeah. yeah, be the host. Mm -hmm. So we've had guest hosts before. That's um, cool. yeah. On a couple of occasions, I had someone wanted to do one on comic book trivia. Um, and I said, absolutely, um, because I want to play that one. And I lost, and I was super sad. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, that's the thing, too. If you know someone who's got, is an expert in some field. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Have them make up the questions. Exactly. Maybe. Exactly. Um, a question that I had in uh, at MPLA when I did this a month ago, someone said, oh, I'm not very outgoing. What if I can't host the quiz? Um, mm -hmm. And one, yes, you can. I mean, practice in the mirror for a day. Um, the bar is very low. Uh, at at, at a, a place that serves alcohol for level of entertainment. So if you don't think you can do it, you can. But additionally, um, I mean, if you really know you can, is there someone else who works in the library? Is your children's librarian an outgoing, shiny, bubbling person? Rope that person in. Um, is there someone in town? Is there someone who uses your, your library? Is there a parent or, you know, the guy who sits on the computer all day? Uh, you know, someone you have a connection with. Is that someone... That would be interested in, in volunteering their time to help you out. Mm -hmm. So um, I was at the um, Iowa Library Association annual conference last month. It was just in October, mm. and one of their evening events was trivia night. And um, first, you had your dinner, and then you had that afterwards. And they brought in and I quite, local celebrities, I guess you would say, to okay. host. This was someone, and I didn't not being from Iowa, somebody who's on the radio and does a lot of stuff with the libraries actually for kids events and things too. Oh, interesting. And um, he was the one they brought in to host it. They apparently have done this before. So that was kind of cool. Get someone from who's your a local you know, celebrity, local celebrity, and have them like the local newscaster mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. um, would the mayor be someone who would want to participate? You know, mm. I Good. thought that was interesting that it wasn't just the a librarian or someone from the from the library association doing it. They brought in someone that mm -hmm. people in Iowa do. <laughs> <laughs> Real famous yeah, Iowa yes. people. So um, I thought that was very creative. And they did a lot of things that you did. I've never done at these pub nights, but the ones with the, the movie um, posters, but with all the, the title taken out, that was a really, I thought that was a very creative, cool one. That was, that was a fun one to figure out because you'd look at, you'd think you know these movies. You've seen them a million times. But once you take away the words, mm -hmm. it's this blank picture, and you're like, I don't know. And exactly. they left. It was fine and funny. They did leave on this one at the bottom of it. They had projectors up on the wall. The um, All the small, t the, t the tiny text that says starring so-and-so and so-and-so mm -hmm, and so mm -hmm. by 20th Century Fox or whatever. 
And a few times people, and it was apparently loud, running up to the screen and trying to be able to read that. <laughs> but it was still so small and blurry that you couldn't read all of it. So it was still not a total giveaway. And people were like, it's not even helping. I don't even know by it. <laughs> so what if it stars, you know, Tom Cruise? He's in a million movies that look like this. Exactly. Which one? Which one is it? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, since there's if anybody no has any questions, go ahead and type them into the question section of your GoToWebinar interface. Yes, and while we're doing that, I will show off. Yeah, I'll show off the Google Drive. So I've I've shared with Krista the link to our <laughs> wrong keyboard. Yeah. Here we go. Too many computers. Exactly, yeah. our ZPub quiz folder. So you'll have access to view. Um, so it's kind of helter skelter. Um, because we have answer sheets, but not all the answer sheets necessarily made in there. Murphy's is one of our bars, mm -hmm. Kino is one of our bars, and our summer tour um, is another one. Uh, so it's it's. I apologize for the hodgepodge. Some of the quizzes live in here, separated by year. Some of them by location. Some of them were just things that we pulled off of uh, Evernote, where we used to put all of our quizzes, okay. uh, and just dumped them into there. Uh, we got a really sweet Star Trek quiz. Questions oh, one through five are fill in the blank, mm -hmm. which is which was. Oh, I see. Fill in the yep. what the phrase. Space the, the final blank. Yeah. Um, we did one for the local hospital. We've done Olympics trivia, uh, Valentine's Day. We've done questions submitted by other players. Um, so we, your question on the quiz for next time. Exactly. So you're you're guaranteed to know one. Um, <laughs> some of the this was our first pub quiz ever, um, and it was uh, creatively titled "Stuff You Learned in School," um, only not stuff. Um, <laughs> but uh, it was questions uh, from PE, science, math. English, history, and music. So, so PE is the hardest because it was would. all the uh, Presidential Physical Fitness Award, oh, God, which no one can ever get. <laughs> I know we had to do it. I didn't know that what the act what you're supposed to be getting for mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Exactly. So PE was the hardest, but then, like in science, um, since this was the first one, I made an answer sheet. In question number one, or science. Part A was name the planets furthest inward, but I put nine blanks. But this was after Pluto wasn't a planet, so it was a ha ha oh. gotcha. So you had to know better. Um, Pluto's a planet. Yes, Pluto. <laughs> <laughs> so that was our first quiz ever. Um, you know, word problems, equations, math. We never really did anything like that again, mm -hmm. um, only because people told us, like, that was really great. I hate those. <laughs> You're like, well, thank you. Um, let's see. So we have we have quizzes and we have pub quiz and PQ and flyers and answer sheets. Star Wars. Mm -hmm. uh, we did a '90s. Oh, cool. So here are our um, for the '90s pub quiz. We had five identify questions. Eh, no, six. It looks like. Um, so we had identify questions based on um, the band or oh the uh, the 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 album, oh, album cover. covers, yeah. And okay. then we had questions based on the, um, the music snippet. Songs, yeah. yep. Mm -hmm. uh, and those are all less than 30 seconds, so they should be good for copyright. Mm -hmm. So we do have a couple of questions that have come in now, too. Oh, um, when you write your own questions, how much time does it take, usually, when you're trying to come up with your own? I mean, um, how, many you, how many questions do you do? We do 30 make? questions. Okay. We like to say... Hi, welcome to Pub Quiz. Thirty questions in sixty minutes, or your money back. And there's no okay. money, so it's really fine. <laughs> um, but we try to play in an hour's worth of time, and okay. we try to give the first half hour to asking the questions or making sure everyone has the questions answered. And then there's a, a short little break where people can get a drink um, or uh, have something asked to them, like right next to them. Like I get one, like, can you give me number fifteen again? Again, and so right. I'll read them question fifteen, and they'll look at me. And I'll look at them, and they'll try to be like, "Is he gonna give it away if I say the answer?" So they start, they start like free form, you know, free form responding to just my stare. I'm like, "That's that's very good." You gotta good. have a good poker. You face. You gotta have a great this. poker yeah. face. Um, Sneaky. Mm-hmm. Uh, it takes, depending on um, 
once you find your theme, then it's relatively easy to find your sources, internet or book um, for your questions. Um, so it can take as little as two hours if you, what I recommend doing is make your questions, like write your question and then write your answer. Let me see if I can find one that is our questions. Here we go, boy bands. Where's our quiz for boy bands? Of course not. Hold, please. <laughs> I'm sorry, team. Um, <laughs> Son of a biscuit. Well, the quizzes are somewhere, but they're not here. Um, do you, here we go, June. We'll just do this one. So question, answer, question, answer. Mm -hmm. And then have someone who you know isn't playing or someone who works at the library or your boss or your colleague or your, your cubicle mate. Read over them to make sure that one, um, you haven't made too hard of a quiz. Mm -hmm. um, we used to sit in the revising room and we would ask the people um, who were working on a Tuesday night, who were the, the regular Tuesday crew, who would check the pub quiz for Thursday. Um, so we would just ask that they would do the pub quiz because none of them were going. Um, but then they would they would read they would try to to we would give it to them and they would write down the answers to see if they were any good at it to see what was too hard. Um, but then it also gives you a chance for someone to go over your wording. Sometimes you write a question and it sounds it makes perfectly good sense when you type it. But then when you try to stand up and read it in front of people, Nobody understands. you're like, yeah. Bleh, bleh. So you want a proofreader to, yes. as far as like, you know, grammar and, and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Um, this was must have been sports and stuff, sports and stuff mm -hmm. and things. So, like, where can you find all you'll need in the city of Hastings for entertainment this summer, including music programs, movies, <laughs> children's programs, prizes, and all your current DVDs, CDs, that magazines, and newspapers for free? A leading question. Wow. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that wasn't leading that in, in the slightest. Um, So this is going to take some prep work. Yeah, it will take some prep work. And I'm um, sure there are places, that, like you said, you know, using Trivia Pursuit or websites or something mm -hmm. that put together these kind of... Yes, uh, I found out there are places you? you can pay oh, really? to get trivia. I mean, some bars do it that way. When they do trivia, they just subscribe mm -hmm. to a quiz service, uh -huh. and they get, like, an email once a month with, here are 30 trivia questions curated by Company X. Mm -hmm. Um We've never had to go to that, but that would might be, I mean, depending on the cost, that might be a really cheap way mm -hmm. to get some good trivia for a few months under your belt so then you get can started. Yeah, yeah, get started, get a following going, and then you can start making your own. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have kind of an example of what questions are good to ask, what's what's really hard. You can get a feel for what your your audience is, likes to do. Exactly. Yeah. There's another question. Um, have you had any disputes about your answers? Oh, absolutely. Like where they don't agree with what you think the... That's the thing, too. When I, when I did in Iowa, there was rules, too, that you, you were not allowed to have any phones out yes. for looking up things on the Internet or trying mm -hmm. to find the answer. Mm -hmm. It had to all be done. And they kept an eye on that, too. Yeah. They saw you. You could get disqualified. No or... cell phones, <laughs> no phone of friends, no, no friendly helping. Uh, yeah. You're welcome to listen to other teams as they play yeah. uh, because that's you know perfectly allowed. Um, but, uh, disputes so disputes over like, disputes, what you said the answer was. And... Disputes go one of two ways. Someone says the answer is this. Uh, so yesterday we had a, uh, how do you thicken gravy? And so we said cornstarch or flour and so on. So mm -hmm. what about roux? And I said, well, yeah, technically since roux is just flour or cornstarch and water, I guess. <laughs> um, but another question we had was, um, uh, in uh, what makes Campbell's Soup Company very happy because everyone makes green bean casserole? And the answer is cream of mushroom. Um, yeah. Um, but someone said, well, what about cream of celery or cream of chicken? And we said, yes. I guess you could. You, you I mean, those are perfectly like, cream of, you know, cream of soup. Um, so sometimes, cool sometimes we're like, okay, sure, because you asked. Um, we had one of the presidents for giving the turkey was George H.W. Bush. And so someone said, well, if you just put President Bush, I said, no, there are two. There's you need to be specific. Them. Yeah. Um, See, sometimes there is a right answer that they can't argue about. And, I, and I, don't, I don't say this at the beginning, but we are the final arbiter. So 
even if we're wrong and it's and it's you know and they can prove me wrong for the purposes of pub quiz I am always right I am God <laughs> King of Dune do not yeah and really uh, it's just a pub quiz yeah, yeah, exactly. But people take it but, very yeah. seriously. And there's the prizes, I guess. That, yes, yeah, yes. That we're going for, yeah. I'm trying to find one of the quizzes that Erica sent. I know. Google Drive is so confusing for me because it's really messy. Um, it can get very messy very quickly, yes. I've had that problem. Also own. because we went from a, a server stored at our place to dump everything to Google Drive and take that server offline because we're moving to a temporary uh -huh. space, so we're not taking that server with us. Um, oh. So everything got loaded twice because someone was like, just drag and drop. And then someone else was like, oh, I'm going to go through and take my folders with me. So it's a little piecemeal. So I apologize. At some point it might be cleaned up. <laughs> yes. Well, and that's something that we will probably be doing uh, because we're in storage uh, in mm -hmm. temporary locations is clean up things. So you might, if you visit this thing over and over and over again, because we do throw all of our new quizzes in here. I just mm -hmm. don't know how to find them. Um, Erica makes them, saves them in here, then shares them with me, so I never have to go finding anything. Um, excuse me. Uh, but every month there'll be a new pub quiz in here, so you're welcome to steal them from us. Uh, sometimes they might be a little too specific to Nebraska. Uh, we do love our football and our volleyball and our yes. sports ball, uh, so we will ask questions about that. Uh, but you're welcome to, you know, cut those out and replace them with Whatever you're doing in... Use your own state. Oregon. Your we have Oregon people here, right? Washington. Washington. And Arizona. Northwest. Yeah. yeah. Um, actually, we did ask, can we get access to these questions? Yes, Jake has emailed me the URL, the link to this um, folder in his Google Drive here. So um, when I put up the recording after this, I will have a link to this and to his actual presentation. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll have a link. You'll, you have a, you'll have access to all of these. Yep, they're out there publicly. So have that. Yeah. Um, Pick apart, uh, borrow, steal, <laughs> make your own. Um, I'd like to, you know, someday, somehow, it'd be nice if there were a library repository for all these things where you could just throw mm -hmm. in drive links to various pub quizzeries. Um, a, a group, a place. Uh, a yeah, like a, yeah, like a group dump where, share, where you yeah. just share the URL to your shared pub quiz folder, your Dropbox or whatever, mm -hmm. and then we can all just beg, borrow, and steal. Yeah, because you can do searches. As I did look up like library pub quiz, and there's, they're all over the place. Mm -hmm, I mean, mm -hmm. all over the country, people are doing them in various different ways. Um, oh, these are some in England even. Came out, yes, right? England yeah. is real big, but they yeah. call a pub quiz, like because a public house is a bar, so oh, okay. their bars take it really seriously. <laughs> um, it was probably called November. No, not that one. Because okay. oh, that's bulletin boards. That would be why. <laughs> oh, one of these days we'll find it. Oh, 2014. Dang it. Well, we named it something else. Celebra oh, yeah. So um, what was neat about Pub Quiz this month is that we did two Pub Quizzes in four days. Um, because on Thursday of last week was the, the annual downtown Hastings Lighting of the Lights celebration. Oh, okay. So they call it Celebration of Lights. You know, it's all kids and horse-drawn carriages and Santa and various groups and dancers mm -hmm. and Taekwondo demonstrations and whatnot. Um, you can buy a bunch of chintzy stuff and, <laughs> you know, course. eat hot chocolate from a cart. Um, and then they turn on the Christmas lights in downtown Hastings. And it's, it's a big to-do. Big event. Cool. Um, but we, so that ends at 7. And so at 8 o'clock, we had a, a pub quiz at um, a new tap room for a new brewery that just opened up. So uh, we called it a celebration of pub quiz. And it was so it was mostly booze questions and a couple of holiday questions because we're the holidays without booze. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, sometimes we do very special pub quizzes that kind of come out of the regular schedule. I mean, last night's was out of the regular schedule because it wasn't a Thursday. Mm -hmm. But um, if someone invites you to do a pub quiz, um, 
you know, be sure to get them to like, you're going to help with the questions, right? But um, if they're going to help write the quiz and they just want you to come and present it because you have a great product, um, that's just more relevance because mm -hmm. it's just people recognize that the library is cool. Like they came to us, this, this brewery, and said, hey, we want Pub Quiz to come on Celebration of Life Thursday because it's cool and people like it. Mm -hmm. So now we are a, a force for good in small mm -hmm. business. Did um, you bring in the people, yeah. You, yeah. So have you had any, um, you said this is you know, the most thing the library is doing, have you had any obvious connection where somebody has actually come into the library and said, because I was at Pub Quiz last night, I now have to come here to do whatever or use the service or see what the library is doing. Have you, has it been any kind of obvious I have connection? never experienced that in uh, my five years. Um, that's interesting. But I, I know that our use it might just not say our I mean, use statistics usually go up after we mention things like Freegal, Hoopla, oh, Zinio, yeah. and the like. So I can track it kind of so, anecdotally that way. Right. So you um, can see jumps in that. Right. Yeah. Sometimes we give away free free points if you sign up for something. We've done mm -hmm. a bonus point uh, or a bon a tiebreaker question was you get a point for every person at your in your team that has their library card on them. Yeah. Um, so. Um, and then mm -hmm. the team that lost because someone didn't have a library card and signed them up for a library card <laughs> and get that taken care of. Um, Next time you can win. Exactly. <laughs> so um, nothing nothing concrete like, hi, mm -hmm. I was at Pub Quiz last night and now I need this book. Mm -hmm. um, there was a time we did a, a, a very boozy trivia quiz uh, theme and I had just purchased a bunch of new, uh, like, I bought the Jello Shot Test Kitchen book, which is oh wonderful. Okay. Yeah. It's beautifully <laughs> illustrated, and there's I mean this this is this is Jello Shots on a on a whole new level yeah. in terms of uh, like two colors and two flavors mm. and shapes and special silicon molds and the like. Not um, that creative. <laughs> but <laughs> we uh, I hyped that book because I was like we have all these brand new booze books that we just bought because uh, there was something in the world that was like craft beer and, and mm -hmm. you know all that fun stuff was back um and those were those had higher circulations mm -hmm. um so i can, can be related yeah. i can presume that someone heard about it at pub quiz and checked it out um but it could just be someone who wanted to know how to make some really good Cuba Lima, uh, some Cuba libre <laughs> jello shots interesting yeah i'll have to look up that book <laughs> for our next party <laughs> it's Wonderful. It's actually the Jelly Shot Test Kitchen because oh, Jello, Jello is, is a, a trademark. Name. Yeah, oh. yeah. So, yeah, you gotta <laughs> you gotta do that. But other than that, um, you do. any other questions mm. or any other touring of the pub quiz folder that needs to be. Yeah, is there anything? Yeah, um, we're almost hitting 11 o'clock here, which I know we started a few minutes late, so um, we have time. Um, anybody want to see anything, any of these quizzes that he's been... Oh, our very first logo. <laughs> <laughs> Made poorly by me. That's pretty cool. <laughs> oh, I like he's got this, the uh, a Scrabble tile in yeah. there. Um, anything else you want to know about it? Anything you want to see? Uh, type in the question section before we do officially wrap up. Hey, the Jelly Shot Test Kitchen has a website. Yes. Mm. It's a really interesting book. I mean, if you just want to, like, learn how to make a two-layer jello, I mean, you can keep the booze out of it if you like and just make some really delicious things. Cause... Irish Car Bomb Jelly Shots. Okay, uh -huh. I'm in for this, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the things you learn because yes. of pub quiz. And that's kind of, and, and that's the, it's really kind of what we strive for is that it's not necessarily like, here's a new piece of learning. It's kind of like the, oh, I learned something. It's sneaky. Yeah. Yeah. Sneaky. And sometimes, yeah, it's just trivial because it, it happens. <laughs> um, and there were no files in the Wanda's. Boo. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, it doesn't look like anybody's typed in any urgent questions right now, so. Oh, I should probably go to my last slide. Me. Oh, there. <laughs> if you have any questions, um, you know, 
feel free to blow me up. Um, there's us. Yep. That's okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, Jake at HastingsLibrary.us. Mm-hmm. That's uh, your new. That's emails. our new got, emails. We got along new, with the new building. You got a whole website, new domain, new building, and everything. New everything. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm happy to uh, help you walk through uh, questions. Like Krista said, the recording will have links to uh, yeah. this presentation and the pub quiz folder. So um, no need to worry about those because they're just ridiculously long Google links. Um, yeah. So I don't want to. Um, that you can click on. So that's why, yeah, there's nothing in this yeah. presentation. Yeah. But you'll have quick links to that, yeah. Um, the recording and those links, we sh I should have them ready and sent out to you this afternoon sometime. Um, if it goes through quickly, it's just a matter of, you know, we're at the mercy of YouTube and how quickly they up they upload and, um, <laughs> and convert everything. Um, but so um, when the recording is ready, I'll send you guys all an email and I'll also announce it in our usual places, our mailing list and web uh, Facebook page and whatnot so that you'll um, be able to come back and watch this again, or at least just get the links to all the quizzes. Exactly, exactly. So, so while we've been chatting, nobody's really typed in anything desperately that they need to have answered right now, so I think we will officially wrap it up then. All right. I'm going to steal the mouse back here. Go for it. Yeah. Um, so thank you, um, everyone, for attending. Thank you, Jake, for coming and talking about this. I've Thanks seen, for coming out. You know, as you said, you started this in 2010, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And on Facebook, I always see posts about when pub quiz is coming up and... Hastings is a bit of a ways well, it, it's, from it's, here yeah. but to go, but I always thought it was a fun thing to see that you guys are doing that. And mm -hmm. then when I, I did see that you done we, that Jake had done this presentation about it, I was like, yes, we can <laughs> come on and find out how everybody else can do this, and that'd be awesome. So um, I'm going to just pop open a new thing here and I'll look up. So that will wrap it up for today's show. And luckily, Encompass Live, nobody else has called themselves this yet, and all the since we've been doing this since 2009. So you just Google Encompass Live, you can find our website. Um, the recording, as I said, will be done this afternoon. These are upcoming shows, but their archives go right here underneath those. And let's see, last week we had computer networking for librarians, and I think I had, yeah. A recording and a presentation have the same thing. Have a link to the recording on YouTube and a link to his presentation and um, the folder that you can just click on to get to it. So you don't have to try and find it in yourself there. Um, and as I said, these are our recordings going back to the beginning. So feel free to also, when you're here, browse through and see if there's any other topics. Um, goes all the way back to our first show in 2009. Um, we did use some different software in the past, but everything's been converted, and it's just up there nice and easy on um, YouTube now. So. Neat. Uh, so that'll be it for today. I hope you join us next week when our topic is the Reader of the Week. Um, this is a presentation that I actually saw at our state library conference, NLA, um, Nebraska Library Association School Librarians Conference. Um, Morton James Public Library in Nebraska City has came up with a Reader of the Week initiative where they actually had... People in, in the, not just, you have your, your, your staff puts out their favorite books or something mm -hmm. or whatever. This was getting just people from the community doing their, what they thought, and putting it in the newspaper. The actual paper, newspaper that they do, yes. And it was a huge success. So, um, uh, Denise is going to, Denise Davis from uh, Morton James Public Library is going to be in the line, to, um, being here to talk to us about that. Um, so I hope you sign up for that. Any of our other sessions, you see I've got December and all booked up and starting in January. Um, as new things get um, confirmed, we'll have them on here as well. Um, Encompass Live is also on Facebook, so if you are a big Facebook user, please do pop over there and like our page. There we go. It's coming up slowly. Mm -hmm. um, and we, I post notices about... Um, there's our photos. Uh, here's a reminder to log in for today's show. When the recording's available, I post a notice on here. When um, reminders about promoting the upcoming shows. So if you are big on Facebook, give us a like there, and you'll be notified um, as of what we're doing. Other than that, that wraps it up for today's show. Thank you very much, everyone, for attending. Thank you for driving in. You're welcome. Terrible Thanksgiving weather. Oh, it's not snowing that there yet, wasn't. so it's fine. Yes, we have not had snow here. Not until Monday, in, apparently. In, oh, really? Here in <laughs> yeah. eastern Nebraska, so um, lucky for us. <laughs> <laughs> um, so thank you very much, and everyone um, have a happy and safe uh, Thanksgiving. Yes. Eat a lot of I'm going to eat my heart out. <laughs> All right. Uh, and we'll see you next time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye.